Hello class, my name is Dr. Kennedy Perrin, and we are on section 3.4, Environmental Influences on Prenatal Development. This is the last section of chapter three. So the fetus is protected in utero, but how? So the fetus is protected in utero by that amniotic sac that we've been talking about throughout the chapter. However, they are still at risk of environmental hazards, unfortunately. Researchers are very aware of the risks and hazards and are able to prevent and help with their scientific knowledge. So how does a maternal nutrition affect prenatal development, you might wonder. So nutrition is actually considered an environmental factor, even though it is something that is part of intake for the mother. Um, it starts as an outside source, so it is part of the environment. Although this is commonly uh, said, the fetus takes what they need from the mom, this is actually false. So unfortunately, if the mother is not eating enough or enough um, nutrition, uh, low fetal birth weights and developmental issues will follow when nutritional needs are not met. This also can lead to cognitive delays, which also are due to fetal malnutrition as well. So protein can help uh, the fetus develop in positive ways. So what is stillbirth? Stillbirth is the birth of a dead fetus, unfortunately. And I'm so sorry to any of you if you've ever experienced this loss. In a study conducted by women who were overweight, um, they were actually twice as likely to have a stillbirth than their um, healthy weight counterparts. So there are many causes to this tragic event to make this occur. Obesity during pregnancy can lead to a higher risk of stillbirth, but it is not the only correlating factor. This unfortunately is pretty common um, event in birth for many women. So what should a pregnant woman eat for nutrition? Some examples include proteins, vitamins, whole grains, and uh, calcium and folic acid. So examples of each protein would be meats, eggs, beans, milk, and cheese. Vitamin A would be vegetables and milk. Vitamin B would be wheat germ, whole grain breads, and even liver. Whole grains would be oatmeal and breads and some cereals. Uh, calcium would be milk and cheese, and then folic acid would be any of your leafy green vegetables, spinach and kale especially. So in reducing risks of harmful birth defects, so women who take vitamin supplements such as prenatal vitamins actually reduce the risk of negative pregnancy outcomes. So this is very important to start a prenatal. Specifically, taking folic acid supplements actually decreases neural tubes defects in babies, um, and we talked about neural tubes in section 3.2, uh, which can lead to, unfortunately, paralysis and death if not treated. So weight gain during pregnancy. So slender women are at higher risk of low birth weight babies. This can actually lead to respiratory issues for the baby down the line, and women who are well nourished during pregnancy have a higher probability of delivering a healthy baby um, at a healthy weight. So what are teratogens? Um, does it matter when during pregnancy a woman is exposed to them? This is a good question. So first, teratogens are environmental influences or agents that damage the embryo or fetus. The word originates by um, giving birth to monsters is actually what teratogen means. Um, this has a negative connotation, of course, because um, unfortunately, if there are damaging effects, um, the baby can have some birth defects. It is um, environment, an environmental agent that can be very harmful to the fetus, if not deadly. These can cause um, harmful drugs, caused by harmful drugs that the mother intakes. Um, if the mother is Rh positive for antibodies, uh, this means that her own immune system and antibodies actually attack the fetus, unfortunately. Um, a lot of women who have this actually have to give them shots, themselves shots every day to help um, nullify this reaction in their body. And then also mercury and other heavy metal exposure can cause these as well. So what are critical periods of vulnerability? 
So in this context, um, a period in which the embryo is particularly vulnerable to a certain teratogen. For example, the heart does most of its, um, its development during week five of gestation. So the heart would be most at risk to teratogens and vulnerable during this time period. So what are the effects of drugs taken by the mother in prenatal development? Um, some drugs we can list are the prescription drugs, over-the-counter medicine, and illegal drugs. So these all have differing negative factors on the fetus. So medicines known to harm the fetus. We're going to start with Accutane. This is a commonly used uh, drug prescribed by dermatology for people who have cystic acne and acne that's persistent and will not go away with other methods of treatment. This is an oral pill, and it actually is known for its anti-inflammatory processes uh, and properties that it possesses. So if this is taken in the first trimester, unfortunately, the fetus's eyes, ears, brain, heart, and immune system are all impacted by this drug. Next, we're going to go to thal thalidomide. Um, this is a sedative, and it is linked to birth defects, especially the absence of legs, feet, arms, and hands. Um, it is less prescribed nowadays. It was very popular in the 1970s. Um, within a few years on this drug, more than 10,000 babies were born with missing limbs or stunted limbs. So medicines that um, do continue to harm the fetus, um, we're going to go to antibiotics next. These medicines actually uh, increase the risk of hearing impairments in the fetus um, if the mother takes them during pregnancy. Um, many antibiotics actually increase um, the probability that the baby will have asthma in childhood. Um, also, women are at high risk of miscarriage and are also prescribed hormones called progesterone in the form of a pill in order to maintain these pregnancies. Um, this is because of hormonal imbalance or a history of miscarriage, but unfortunately, sometimes these too much of this drug does cause miscarriage as well. Uh, we're going to move on to DES. This is the abbreviation for diethylstilbenzatorol. Um, this is a long word for estrogen that is linked to some cancers and reproductive organs of children of the mother who used this while pregnant. So these drugs have long-term effects, unfortunately, for the fetuses as they age. So illegal drugs and their impact on the baby. We're going to start with meth and heroin. Uh, so methamphetamines and heroin have led to low birth weight toxemia and premature birth in the babies. Uh, unfortunately, these babies also are commonly born addicted to these substances. Um, they are given these small doses of these substances or a substitute for these substances right after birth so that they don't experience the severe feelings of withdrawal. They're taken through withdrawal very gradually in order to impact them uh, the least amount possible. And the impact of the drugs um, can also impact behavior and delay both um, language development and um, motor skills throughout the first year of life when exposed to heroin in particular. So next we're going to talk about cannabis, alcohol, and cocaine and the impact on the fetus. So the use of marijuana by pregnant women uh, has increased since the legalization of the substance. It can cause low birth weight, slower development, and also um, growth of the fetus and even fetal demise, unfortunately. Uh, the use of cocaine by women is likely to cause stillbirth, low birth weight, or uh, severe birth defects. And finally, alcohol when used by pregnant women can cause FASD, fetal alcohol syndrome disorder. This is a cluster of symptoms shown by uh, children of pregnant women who drank during pregnancy. Uh, typically, there are facial differences that you can notice. Um, and it can also be noticed in their intellectual abilities as well. So lastly, we have what are the effects of the environmental hazards during pregnancy? So there are many pollutants in the environment that pregnant women unknowingly intake, unfortunately. So exposures to things like heavy metal, uh, zinc and mercury are two examples, among others. Um, this actually risks delaying children's development. And then in longitudinal research, so this is research among the same 
ch children in the population over time as they grow up shows that children with higher levels of um, heavy metals in their umbilical cords actually um, can have mental delays uh, to at one or two years of age. So these things can be very severe in the impact on children and their development. So that is all for chapter three. I will see you all in chapter four. Have a good day.